Hello? Yeah, I'm getting ready now, sorry, son. Oversleep? <laughs> ah, I would never... Okay. Yeah. All right, see you at the courthouse. Held on violation of Shinjuku Station's anti-nuisance ordinance, the defendant of this appeal is active duty officer Akihiro Ehara. He was previously convicted and sentenced to six months. However, the defense wholly rejects the sexual battery charge and asserts his innocence. The prosecution points to two pieces of evidence to prove the defendant guilty. One is the security camera footage from Ikebukuro to Shinjuku Station. The other is fiber traces from the victim's undergarments on the defendant's hand. The defense maintains this was not sufficient evidence to issue a guilty verdict. We have prepared counter-arguments to each piece of the prosecution's evidence. How does the prosecution respond? We maintain the original sentence was perfectly adequate. That is all. Then first, let's examine the security footage from Ikebukuro and Shinjuku Station, submitted at the first trial. This is footage of Ikebukuro Station on October 7th at 7.43 a.m. The individual wearing sunglasses and a mask is believed to be the defendant. This person remains in the area for over an hour, watching as countless trains make their stops. At 9.06 a.m., he locates the victim of this case, that he boards the train and pursues her. This footage of the station platform is from when the suspect and victim board the train car. We already saw this during the first trial. Let's not be redundant. Of course not. The victim claimed the defendant moved in a suspicious manner once the train left Ikebukuro Station, ultimately placing his hand under her skirt. After they arrived at Shinjuku Station six minutes later, the victim gathered her courage and grabbed his hand. However, there's a possibility the offender seen here is not the defendant himself, but a different person entirely, a stand-in. The goal was to disguise this event as an alibi for the murder which occurred in Yokohama that same morning. In other words, this instance of sexual battery was a conspiratorial fabrication. The original verdict was issued without taking this into consideration, resulting in an inadequate trial. This is merely speculation. The defense has no proof to support these claims. <laughs> Precisely the issue. Yes, there is indeed no definitive proof that confirms the existence of a stand-in. However, the notion itself cannot be disproved, even with all of the prosecution's evidence. Would you care to elaborate, please? The assailant fled the train and was caught shortly after on the Shinjuku station platform. Many nearby passengers filmed the scene, which then circulated throughout Japan. The impact may have been greater since the defendant was an active duty officer. no mistake that the man apprehended at the platform was the defendant. Upon arrival, station police arrested him and immediately performed a trace element inspection. With that said, there's a very real possibility the offender who ran off the train was an entirely different person, and we have the evidence to prove that. If you'll kindly look at this. What is this? Display it on the large monitor, please. Is that a diagram of Shinjuku Station? 
That's correct, Your Honor. First, the victim and the offender ran onto the platform as soon as the train doors opened. The train car they boarded is here on this map. We've marked the offender's route with an arrow. The lighter areas on the overhead view are within the security camera's line of sight. More people pass through Shinjuku than anywhere on Earth in a single day. It's packed with security cameras. However, this arrow with the dotted line reveals the existence of a small blind spot. That's where the defendant and stand-in swapped places. I see. So you claim this was their opportunity? Yes. As such, I'd like to question the defendant once more over this evidence. Defendant, when you were issued the verdict in your first trial, you said the following to the judge. In a warehouse about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. If that wasn't enough, you correctly identified the body as Hiro Mikoshiba, despite the fact the police had yet to do so. How did you manage to pull off such a feat? It came to me in a dream. Strange. Mikoshiba-san was your son Toshiro-kun's classmate, was he not? That's right. Toshiro Ehara was found dead in his apartment four years ago. He took his own life. Afterward, the defendant sued the school over Toshiro-kun's suicide. Yes? Ehara-san, can you tell us why you sued the school? There were rumors my son had been bullied. Unfortunately, the court wasn't able to substantiate that claim. And these rumors were discovered on the internet? They were. Of the bullies mentioned, Miko Shiba-san's name was among them. Were you aware of this? I was. Would you say you harbored murderous intent against Miko Shiba-san? Objection! The defense's question is irrelevant. This case is to examine whether or not sexual battery took place. Also, the Kanagawa police are actively investigating Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. The courtroom is no place for baseless speculation. How does the defense respond? The timing of the battery incident makes this case an alibi for Mikoshiba-san's murder. We believe there's a very relevant connection. Very well. The prosecution's objection is overruled. And please keep it brief. Just as soon as the defendant answers the question, did you harbor murderous intent for Hiro Mikoshiba? Of course I did. In other words, Your Honor, it goes like this. On the day Toshiro-kun's bully, Mikoshiba-san, was killed, the defendant set out to synchronize the murder with sexual battery. It became his alibi for the murder, and the prosecution and the court all but approved it. <sighs> A six-month sentence, sexual battery and getting away with murder. That's all the motivation the defendant needed to fabricate this elaborate scheme. His stand-in groped his accomplice and then they swapped places before getting caught. It's all entirely possible. Then the defense should present some evidence to prove it. Wrong. That's not how this works, is it? The prosecution bears the burden of proof in criminal cases. If we go through all the evidence and discover the possibility no groping took place, then it's on the prosecution to refute that. Fine. Have it your way. The defense's argument about the security camera's blind spot is flimsy at best. While the defendant was running, his female victim was chasing after him. Surely the victim would have seen if he had switched places with a stand-in. Yet the victim provided no such testimony. The victim, Yui Mamiya, was an accomplice in the scheme. Objection! This is an insult to the victim. Such claims harm the integrity of all women!
We have good reason to doubt the victim's credibility. She was all part of his plan. In fact, that's all but sure. A 50-something man separated from his wife was driven by loneliness to harassment. That seems much more likely. The way you phrase that, is the prosecution admitting the defense's claims aren't wholly impossible? Beg pardon? That would imply the guilty verdict from the first trial was issued without 100% certainty. Now you're just nitpicking! Defense, if you claim to doubt the victim, then what is your reasoning? Yes, we do. In actuality, she wasn't the only conspirator who helped stage the groping. The bystander who captured the defendant, the witness who recorded the incident on his smartphone. Both men, in conjunction with the victim, were classmates from the same high school. Which means, strange as it sounds, that these seemingly unrelated individuals were, in fact, all acquaintances. It's clear that this was a carefully organized and planned event. Our investigation discovered they all graduated from Kurokawa Academy in Tokyo 13 years ago. Additionally, Yokosawa, the teacher who was killed in Ijincho, graduated from the same class. Four years ago, she was the teacher of the defendant's son, Toshiroku. We believe this indicates a connection between the Kurokawa Academy graduates and this case. Of course, that's as deep as we need to go on that. We've simply presented the possibility that multiple conspirators were present when the defendant was apprehended. And as long as such a possibility exists, the defense asserts the defendant cannot be found guilty. Your Honor, may I speak? What is it? I haven't committed murder. Per my conviction, I am just a pervert who victimized a woman on the train. Everything else is in the defense's imagination. Defendant, why did you agree to this appeal then? You can ask my lawyers that. I simply didn't stop them. How does the defense respond? It's just as the defendant says. However, we believe his recollection may be a bit fuzzy. To refresh his memory, I'd like him to take a look at some footage. Will you permit this, Your Honor? Now what? But please, don't display this on the large monitor. We shouldn't shock the public. It's footage of a murder. Excuse me, wasn't that denied as evidence? As I said, this is solely to refresh your memory. It's up to the judge whether or not we show it. Please proceed. That's just internet footage with no known origins. No. This footage is from the SD card in the camera used to record it. This is a write once read many card, also known as a worm. The police use it to photograph evidence. Anything recorded on it is highly reliable data. After serving your time, you intended to release this to the public. But Kawana can't wait for that to happen. And that's why he left it in my care. <laughs> Don't kill me! Please! I'm sorry. No sure good. I'll make it up to him. I'll atone for it! I swear I'll try to make it up to him somehow. I'll spend the rest of my life making up for it! Stop 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 it. <laughs> Defendant, in that footage, is the person in the white raincoat you? You could say it looks like me. The person you killed is Hiro Mikoshiba. According to the autopsy report, he died sometime after 7.30 a.m. on October 7th. Therefore, it can only be that the person who passed through the ticket gate shortly after at 7.43 a.m. was not you, but your stand-in. 
As the defense, we cannot allow our client's conviction of sexual battery to stand in light of this footage. May we continue questioning the defendant? How does the prosecution respond? Even if the footage has an irrefutable source, that alone does not prove guilt of murder. I'd just like to state that in advance. So the prosecution is denying the murder? <laughs> Remind me who exactly is defending me here. Good question. The defense repeatedly mentions a stand-in, but where is this person currently? Who even are they? The person on the station security footage was wearing sunglasses, but he looked just like the defendant. We believe he used a mask made from a 3D printer. If you look closely, the alleged defendant at Ikebukuro Station and on the train does not move his mouth at all. We learn this from sources who may have been the stand-in and the collaborators. Then we should call them to the stand to testify. No need. The defendant should know all of this already. I don't know anything about it. He said he doesn't know. So what now? The defendant admitted to sexual battery, not murder. The murder footage has excellent production value, but nothing else corroborates the defense's claims. Your Honor, I would like to request further witness testimony from the victim. Denied. Both the defendant and the victim certified the validity of the battery, leaving no room for discrepancies. It would be unprecedented for a victim to testify further in this situation. By that logic, there's no precedent for using battery as an alibi for murder either. I will admit there is a possibility, but not enough to justify subjecting the victim to further distress in court. I must once again deny the request. But... Defense, I've made myself clear. Your Honor, following the defendant's last statement, we have a few more questions. Understood. Please proceed. What's next? You're an active duty police officer. Do you still hold that title with pride? It would be ridiculous to say I do now. But in my past, I took down criminals in the name of justice and tried to make a difference, even around the time of my son's suicide. And, as fate would have it, that same justice system decided no one was to blame for it. If I had to pick a moment, my pride as an officer died. That would be it. Not that it matters. That has no bearing, and doesn't mean I killed Mikoshiba. I suppose not, huh? Ehara-san, you're familiar with Jin Kuwana, aren't you? He's a handyman in Ijinchu. Nope. Never heard of him. On October 7th, Kawana disguised himself as you and boarded a train in Ikebukuro bound for Shinjuku Station. He was the stand-in for the sexual battery mentioned earlier. Your Honor, no evidence has been submitted to verify that statement. The name Kawana was not present on any documentation, nor was the prosecution notified. Kawana is the very person who encouraged the defendant to murder Mikoshiba-san. Defense. As the prosecution has stated, no one by the name of Kuwana is known to the court. We've not even confirmed if he exists. Please refrain from this line of questioning. But, Your Honor, Kuwana is a key factor in the defendant's motive. Without him, Ahara-san never would have killed Mikoshiba and we wouldn't be in this courtroom. Am I getting through to you? I... don't know a Kuwana. No. You definitely do. Kawan is the one who fanned the flames of vengeance. You'd do well to remember that. Take a listen to this. 
What is it? It wasn't just some random internet post that made you decide to kill Mikoshiba-san, was it? Even while battling the school in court, you still didn't know for sure who pushed Hoshiro-kun to his death. That's when Kuana came to you with this recording, right? Hmm? That's... Why do you... Toshiro-kun came running to the roof. His face was pretty swollen. And a few minutes later, a student named Mikoshiba came up looking for him. I'll never forget the fear I saw in Toshiro-kun's face. That's the voice of Yokosawa, the teacher Toshiro-kun confided in about being bullied four years ago. It was recorded in secret and played for the defendant by Kawana. He told me about everything. The teasing, the beatings, the theft. How nobody was on his side. And yet, I had to deny all this. In front of an entire courtroom. Believe me, I never wanted to do that. But they said there was no hope. That I was the only witness with no proof whatsoever. After hearing this, the defendant came to believe Mikoshiba-san's unchecked aggression toward Toshiro was the driving force behind his son's tragic suicide. And ultimately, this became his motivation for murdering Mikoshiba-san and staging his elaborate cover-up. Isn't that right, Ihara-san? Is it coming back to you yet? <sighs> Afraid not. I see. Then, is that all? Can the defense please get back on track? This recording only came into my hands by means of Kawana. Except, thinking about it now, much like the murder footage, that would qualify as an unreliable source, wouldn't it? What? We live in an age where audio and video footage can be fabricated and easily reproduced. <laughs> what are you getting at? Sawa-sensei, the one speaking in the recording, was murdered only days ago. And the one who recorded it, Kawana, disappeared without a trace. Meaning that as far as this recording is concerned, no one is left who can prove that it's authentic to the court. Or is my understanding incorrect? You would say you're completely unaware of the details about your son in this recording. Kawana had it. Didn't he play it for you? I never heard it. Regardless of the content, it has nothing to do with me. So you say. In that case, let's just assume then that Kawana and I are the only ones in possession of this audio recording. And considering that Kawana has all but vanished without a trace, that would actually make this the only copy, and me the sole owner. No backup exists. What are you getting at? This has no value in this courtroom then I'm afraid it's never gonna have a value beyond today. And being that you claim it's unrelated to you or this case, then it wouldn't bother you if I were to delete it from my phone right here and now. Why would... That's crazy. I wouldn't! Okay. Then tell me why I shouldn't do it. Because... Mikoshibo was... A man who should never have escaped being judged. That's the proof of my son's pain. The proof that everyone ignored. That recording is all I have left of him! I took the school to court because Toshiro deserved justice. But all they could say is that the cause of his suicide couldn't be determined. In the end, not a single person was held responsible. No proof, no justice. My son was hung out to dry. Yes. That's all true. All of you. You're all so incompetent. You see yourselves as these paragons of law and justice. Yet the truth slips right through your fingers. And then, my alibi made you a mockery. I made it so real. You passed me off as just another pervert. You were gullible. Every single one of you. Toshiro threw his life away and justice was blind to his pain. Mikoshiba walked free because of you. You condone murder and call yourselves the law. That's why. That's why I did it. 
I took Mikushiba's life with my own hands. This is coming in hot. Remember that pervert cop? Turns out he's actually a murderer. To recap, you killed Hiro Mikushiba in Ijincho, then headed to Shinjuku Station where you and Kawana pulled off a switch, and there you were ultimately arrested as a groper. Yeah. That's right. Defendant, you bear animosity for the whole system. We can't just take your words at face value. If you're responsible for Mikoshiba-san's murder, can you bring forward any evidence, or just the murder footage? To tell you the truth, I have something that I was holding on to for the impact that it would have. It's very real evidence that the law has failed us. What have you been hiding then? Will it prove you killed Mikoshiba? Yes. Then what is it? If you go to my wife's apartment, you'll find my son's altar there, in it. You'll find the weapon I used for the crime, the knife I murdered him with. It still has Mikoshiba's blood on it. Wait a minute, Genda-sensei. I prayed at that altar. Well, I guess you can lead a horse to water. Very well, then. We'll open an investigation. Defense. Will there be anything further? No matter how justified, vengeance is not something we can ever take into our own hands. That said, in the case of Ahara-san, our system failed him. We know the law strives to be just, but it failed to prove Toshiro-kun was bullied. That's not justice. Not when no one is held responsible. The law, as well as those who enforce it, are far from perfect. So to the court, I say let this case be a lesson. The law is failing to save people who need saving. It's clear proceedings should be adjourned. At a later time when Mikoshiba-san's murder weapon is recovered, we can resume the trial. I'm willing to do that via a special exception. Defense, prosecution, is that clear? No objections. The defense rests, Your Honor. Well, Kanagawa PD called from the Ehara residence. They've recovered the knife. I'm ashamed to admit that I was so blind to his scheme. Well then, that makes two of us. <sighs> Seems I underestimated you. And the worst part of all, I was arrogant. Legal authority and organizational connections should never be held above the pursuit of truth. I'm glad you were able to make me see that again. Thank you. <laughs> nah. You've come a long way. Genda-sensei. Prosecutor Takano's been stubborn as hell from the day he passed the bar. Once he's made up his mind, nothing can stand in his way. Not even his own boss. And he only bows once in a blue moon, so I hope you remember this. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Genda law. I'm never going to like you. <laughs> you two really pulled it off. Great job. Yagami-san. It's Kusumoto, the Vice Minister. Bondo. He's from Public Security? Right. You handled that with such grace, Yagami Sensei. It's no wonder Kawana holds you in such high regard. What brings you here? 
Yagami Sensei, would you mind if we talked alone? Why, though? Something we can't hear? The more you know, the more you risk. You'd be endangering your own lives. If you're willing to accept that, feel free to stay. We'll clear the room. At this point, we'd just be getting in Yagami-san's way. It was nearly a month ago that Kusumoto-san received a letter from Kawana, though we were unable to use it to trace him. What did it say? Soma told you, didn't he? Kawana hid Shinya Kawai's body, seeing as Kusumoto-san's fingerprints and other traces were still on it. If that surfaces, the Ministry of Health will have yet another massive scandal on its hands. As such, we'd like to recover and dispose of the body as quickly as possible. Perhaps we'll need to melt it down. The body was originally preserved to maintain control over Mitsuru's bullies. I never imagined it would be used against me someday. Fine, but why are you telling me this? Because of the letter he sent. Once Eihara-san's trial is over, he wanted to talk to you. Using my phone. Huh? <gasps> Is that Kawana? Kusumoto-san. Is Yagami there? Put me on speaker, please. Go ahead. So... It seems Ehara-san's trial was a big success. He took our failing legal system and turned it on its head. Couldn't have done it without you. I don't know what you're thinking, but public security has to be tracing this call. You have a plan? No, not this time. That's why I'm using my own phone. And that's just the way I want it. Can't run forever, you know. What the hell are you saying? They catch you, you're a dead man. That's exactly why I'm negotiating to prevent that. Kusumoto-san. Yes. I'll be upfront with you. I never imagined the day would come that you would be the one to betray me. But if I had to guess, Mitsuru-kun must have woke up. If that's the case, then Kawaii's murder, your whole past, you're not the only one it stands to ruin. If all that comes into the light, Mitsuru-kun will be labeled the son of a murderer. Exactly. I can't let that... That's the one thing I need to prevent. I know. That's good. That's exactly what you should be doing. So please, don't stop now on my behalf. Enough is enough. You and your son have been through enough hell. I want to protect Mitsuru-kun too. Almost as much as his mother. Where is Kawai's body? Tell me. I can only assume this call is being traced, so even as we speak, I'm standing somewhere very close to it. You gave us the location. I'm going to dispatch Soma. Kawana! Where are you? I'm an Injincho. If I take even one step out of this city, I'd be powerless. I've got nowhere else left to go. Kawana! After they find Kawai's body and Kawana is taken care of, I'm next on the list. Bondo can act at his own discretion. If he wants me gone, he'll be able to silence anyone who could know too much. Sawa-sensei was just the first victim. You yourself have sealed this fate, you know. Will you tell him? Will you tell Mitsuru-kun about Sawa-sensei? Surely you know it wasn't my fault. Sawa-san's death was a tragedy. I never imagined that would happen. What about Kawana? Can you imagine how his death is going to play out in a few hours? I can. But I'm not going to let him go down without a fight. Which means... 
I'm going to Ichincho. I can talk some sense into Bando. I won't allow him to kill indiscriminately. So please, don't go out there to risk your life. That's how it works. No promises. Tsukumo, Kawan is still out in Ichincho. Soma and RK are heading there too. We need to get to him fast. Wait, are you sure about that? You should be able to pick up some chatter. Pinpoint the location. I'm on my way. I'll talk to you soon.